in the furnace of affliction. And God, God loves us. God loves us and God cares for us. In the midst of it all, God has chosen us. The Bible said, he has chosen me. And you can be seated there. We look at the word of God, even in Israel. Come on. They had gotten comfortable. They had gotten comfortable in God doing so many great things for them. They had gotten comfortable with God providing for them. They had gotten comfortable with having food on the table. They had gotten comfortable with having a roof over their head. They had gotten comfortable with clothes on their back. But one thing we got to remember that God has chosen us. And because God has chosen us, God has called for us to do a work for him. And God didn't choose for us to get caught up in all the things that he's given us on this earth. God has chosen us to what would be found like that before, living according to his will and living according to his promises. Because the people of God had gotten sick now. And the people of God had forgotten about what God has done. And and they forgotten and they had been stubborn according to God's word. And, but God had called each and every one of us to be obedient to his word. And yeah. he called each and every one of us that he said in the word the day you hear his voice. And heart not your heart. And, and God has called us to walk according to his statutes and his commandments. And the God the word said here, God has chosen us. He has chosen thee. In the furnace of affliction. And so many times we don't want to go through some things. We don't want to have to go through nothing. But God said in his peace, he's chosen us. In our anxieties, he's chosen us. In the heartache and pain, he's chosen us. When it seems like we can't get a grasp on life, he has chosen us. God has chosen us that we would do the work that he put before us. Because we can see it in the children of Israel. Right. That the Bible said they were using their name to identify with him. And the Bible goes on and say, and not only that, it talked about, they talk about the holy city. And the holy city that they did not identify themselves with. Because of what the lifestyle that they were living. And that's how it is in this day and time. So many people want to call them Lord, Lord. And they don't want to do the thing that the Lord is requiring of them to do. You know, they call themselves just being religious. And, and so many times people get caught up and just doing what they want to do. But the Bible let them know they have became stiff neck. The neck, as it says in the fourth verse, thy neck is as iron sinew, and thy bow is brass. And, and they had got to the point to where they had forgotten the God that is what brought them out. They were willing, people so willing to stay in captivity. People so willing to stay right where they are. But God is calling us to a higher calling. God is calling us to a higher standard. And God did not want us to stay in that same place. And God required for us more prayer. God required of us more, more of a presence. God required yes. for us more of a relationship with him. And, and a new uh, state of mind and heart. And, and God did not want us to be the same. Yes. But the Father said in the second verse, that when they called themselves of the Holy City and they stayed themselves upon a God of Israel, the Lord of hosts, is his name. So they was identified with a God that they didn't want to do what the Lord said, but God was calling them to a higher calling. And God was calling them to a place that they weren't going to be comfortable with. And so many times, you know, when God calls us to a place to what we're not comfortable with, we find ourselves, you know, contemplating. We find ourselves trying to rationalize it. We find ourselves trying to say, well, Lord, why me, God? And, and Lord, I don't want to understand it, Lord. But the Bible let us know that God has chosen us God. in our affliction, in, in the fire, in the trial, in the tribulation, through the hardship and through the pain, God has still chosen us. Yes. The Bible let us know that we've been made to do it for a night, but I'm here to let you know the joy come in the morning. Yes. But we got to get through the morning time. We got to get through those hardships and we got to get through those pain. But the, the Bible says all we got to do, we got to trust God. And we got to trust God in whatever we're facing. Because it goes on to say that God had called them and, and God loved them even in the affliction. God said, there's some things I got to prove in your life. There's some things I got to show you 
in your life. There's some things I gotta bring you to it, and there's a process that where you know you gotta go through to where you can be the child of God, to where you can be in a fellowship with me like I want you to. And it said the neighbor for our name's sake, God said, because God cares so much for us. And the Bible said the Roman and fire three said, said to us, so not only so, but we glory in tribulations. And, and as we going through our trial and we going through our tests, and, and when we going through the things that are hard for us to deal with, through the fiery furnace of our life, through the through the troubled time and the turbulent time, we found ourselves second guessing and saying, God, are you this is really for me. All right. But God said, You gotta obey me. Don't be calling me Lord. Don't be saying you love me. Don't be saying that you, you're willing to do what I said. Don't be saying that the Father said. He said that what we got to be doing when we come to God, we must know who he is. We must know that he's God. And this God that we're talking about, God is calling us to be able to seek your face and do the thing that pleasing and simple unto us. But the Bible says, you know, said, for my praise, I refrain from thee, because God says in his word, he let him know that everyone that called him by his name. God said, I created you in my glory. That's what it says in Isaiah 43 and 7. I formed him, he said, yeah, I made him. And God said that he had made each and every one of us. And not only made us, but he shaped us and he molded us to his image and in his likeness. And God loved us so much, even in the midst of a children that was being hard at their neck and still neck. God still loved them, even though they didn't want to keep the word and do according to what God had said. But God had a work for each and every one of them. God had called them to holiness and God had called to righteousness. But they got caught up and got comfortable in doing what they want to do. And see, even as you look at that, Israel was in captivity. Even in captivity, people can feel comfortable with it. But God don't want us to stay in that same place. God don't want us to stay in a place to where we can't worship him, to where we can't fulfill the work of the gospel. God wants us to move up higher. Yes. But the Bible says, he said, he said, God, he said, I will frame from thee and I will cut thee not off. That's what it says in the name verse. God said, I will not do it. And it says in Isaiah 43, 25, it says, I, even I, am that that blotted out the transgression for my own, my sake. He said, and will not remember our sins. And God said, I'm going to blot out your transgression. I'm not going to remember your sins, even though you've done all the things that you've done. He said, I've chosen you. And that's something that you got to go through to understand that I love you. And that's something you got to understand but that when you're going through all the furnace of affliction, you got to still see God in it. When you go through the furnace of affliction, you got to yet believe and praise the name of the Lord. When you're going through the pain and the suffering, and you're going through the setbacks, when you're going through the things that you don't understand, that Bible said, the, the, the talk about the righteous and many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. God, I don't see how you get no glory out of this, God. Lord, I understand how I have to go through this, but I like what James said. He said, my brother counted all joy. That what James said, you got to count it joy. When you're going through the trial, when you're going through your test, you got to count it all joy. He said, when you fall and die of temptation, knowing this. See, that's one thing you got to know. You got to know this. You got to know what this is all about. God says, this is your furnace of affliction that I put you in. This is the trial that I put you in. This is the trouble that I said wasn't going to be forever. He said, I said, I was not going to leave you. I was not going to forsake you. He said, you got to renew this, that I am the Lord thy God. You got to know this, that I'm not going to put no more on you than you can bear. Knowing this, that all you got to do is call off on my name. When you know this, and I will answer. When you know that I'm not going to leave you here. He said, knowing this, you got to get the trine of your faith. He said, I, you got your faith is going to be tested now. Jesus. See, the Bible said a just shall live by faith. God, he didn't say you're going to live by no other way. Jesus. And see, that means you got to trust God in this. Yes. You got to believe in what God can do. Trust no matter God. what the man is saying, no matter what the circumstances or the situation look like. Jesus. God said, in your fire of affliction, Jesus. you got to trust me. Trust. 
because you've been chosen. Jesus. You've been chosen because you've been chosen in this. Hey. I'm going to be there right with you. He said, I've chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Jesus. I didn't chose you when you were on the outside looking in. But in the midst of your furnace of affliction, yes, I chose you. When you were going through it all, I was right there in the nighttime. Hey. I was right there. Yes. The Bible said, be still yes. and know that I am God. Be still and know I'm going to be there for you. Be still. Don't move in the door. You can't see in the door. Don't try to get out of the fire. You just got to know I'm going to be with you in the fire. In the storm, I'm going to be right there with you. In the front of the affliction, you're chosen. God said, I'm chosen. Yes. In the furnace. Jesus. Unlike man. Jesus. Man said something you must be undone wrong. My Lord. Why are you going through this? Jesus. Why you can't pay your bill? Jesus. Or are you trusting in the Lord? Jesus. Why why are you why 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 are you you what's what's going on with the job? I thought you were trusting in the Lord. Jesus. Every time I look around, you work on one of these jobs, you can't Jesus. get that job. Jesus. But I'm going to let you know God said, I've chosen you. Jesus. God said, I've chosen you to go through this. Jesus. i told you to go through this way. i told you that you're going to have to do this this time right here. Jesus. i told you that I'm, you're going to be proven. You're going to be tried in the fire. And I'm going to let you know something got to take place in the midst. Hallelujah. Something got to take place in the midst. You know what it needs to happen to our eyes got to be open. Jesus. Our hearts got to be able to receive what God has for us. Hey. And James said, knowing this, the trial of your faith work in patience. Yes. Oh, God said, I got to get some patience into your spirit. Hallelujah. I got to get you where you can trust me yes. in this. Hallelujah. I got to get you where you can believe me in this. I know I got to get you where you need to be. Hey. Oh, God, but I know you. God said, no, no, no. He said, one thing you got to know, God knows the heart. Yes. See, that's the thing about it. God knows our heart. God knows everything that we're going through. The Bible said, as far as the heaven above the earth, God knows our thought from afar off. He said, you need some patience. See, I got to work out some patience in you. And he said, but let patience have a perfect word. Perfect word. See, you got to go through some things. Then that got to be that process got to take place. Transformation got to take place. The Bible said you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's going to take a process. See, I heard a story about the man wanted to make sure that his, that his crop grow a little bit early. So what he had to do, he said, well, I'm going to ease it up a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move up some of the stocks a little bit higher so they can get they can develop themselves a little bit quicker. I don't like the height that they're at right now. Jesus. I don't want my crop to go through that process. Jesus. So I'm going to move them up a little higher every day so they can get higher to where they can get to the stage that I want them to be at. But I'm here to let you know because he started fooling around with the process. The crop that he had ended up dying. The crop that he had didn't make it. I'm going to let you know we got to be willing to go through. Yes. We got to be willing to know that God has chosen us. Jesus. Even in the trial and the test, we got to yet look to God. Yes. We yet got to believe in God. And God is working us. It all out for our good. Uh, and the Bible just said, he said that the perfect, yes. patience, perfect work. Yes. Patience, My perfect God. work. That we may be perfect. Jesus. God said he got to make sure that we're perfect in this thing. Yes. God got to make sure that we're entire in this life that we live in for him. Yes. The Bible said that the wholeness got to take place yes. in our lives. Yes. You know, entire transformation. Yes. You know, we got to make sure yes. that we love God yes. in this and that we trust God in this. Yes. And, and we know when everything is going good, yes. it's easy to say we love the Lord. Right. When everything going our way, it's easy to say we love the Lord. Yes. But when things don't go our way, can you yet trust the Lord? Can you yet believe in Him? Can you believe what the Bible said? I was chosen as Isaiah said. You know, I was chosen. That's one thing we got to know as a people of God. We've been chosen to live this life. We've been chosen to go through what we're facing. And we can't get caught up in the comfortability of the world. We can't get caught up in the world. We, we lose sight of what God has in store for us. Because that greater, that's higher height and deeper depth for each and every one of us. In the furnace.
furnace. Yeah. See, only time people like furnace when they want to get warm, but nobody want to be in the midst of it. Mm. Nobody want to be in the midst of fire. Nobody want to be able to go through, Lord, I don't want it. But the Bible said the chosen. My God. You're chosen to this. You, you're going to be my servant in this. You're going to be the one to call on my name. You're going to be the one that I'm going to answer in this. You're going to be the one that people are going to be glorified because of the life that you live. You're going to be the one because of the furnace of affliction that you endured, not the one that you got out of. But see, because God has it for each and every one of us, he got to purify things in our life. The purifying process has to take place. And it won't take place that the Lord says so. It won't take place that God said you're in time. You can plead. You'll be made whole. Knowing that the, the patient have in time. Wanting nothing. God said we can't want nothing. God said turn to me. Turn to me. Trust in me. Trust me with this. Don't complain. Don't say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Jesus. But we got to be found trusting him. Trust him. We got to be found knowing that the same God gave us the sunshine. Jesus. Even in the rain, he's the same God. Hallelujah. No, he's the same God. He's the same one that I can trust him for right now. Yes. Because the Bible said, in the affliction, in the furnace Jesus. of affliction, he said, I refined thee. Your mind that some, some refining gonna take place. Hallelujah. Some things that was out of place gonna get in line. Hey. Some things that didn't look good gonna look better. Hey. See the purity is gonna see that some purification gonna take place. Hallelujah. When when you refine, when you go in the fire, Jesus. just like silver and gold has to be refined, and wow. the purity has to take place. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna make sure that that I'm gonna put you in there to I can see Hallelujah. my glory in your life. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that the, the silver going to look as pure as it can where I can see it like a mirror. You can see my reflection in your life. Jesus. That people can see my reflection in your life. Yes. People can look up on you and say, Jesus Christ, the hope of glory yes. in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God said here, he said, let her know that I've chosen thee. Yes. I've chosen thee. I love you. And I like what it said, neighbor, for my name's sake. Jesus. It was all for my name's sake. Because God could have cut off Israel when they were messing up. When Israel was seeking for him. When Israel got caught up in the land of Eden. Everything was going the way it's supposed to. When they, they were being stubborn. And their, their neck was still back. When, when, when they were just, I just, just going to church. And some people think I can just go to church and I can make it in. And some people think I can give my tithe. I can make it in. And, and I, can, I can cut this deal. I can cut that deal. But God said no. That's not going to go. You got to live a life with that of a chosen people. You got to live a life of a chosen, a chosen servant of men. And even as you go through what you're going through, you got to yet trust God. He says, he, would ask, he said, I would defer my anger. See, God, see, so many times God could have got angry at us. God could have got upset with us because of the life that we live and some of the things that we've done. But he said, I'm going to defer that thing. I'm going to make sure it's not going to come to you. I'm going to make sure my anger not going to come on you because, see, this is the thing about the Bible. It's a terrible thing to fall into a, a wrath of a angry God. And don't you know that if God's anger was to get a hold to us, we would make it. But the Bible said here, he said, but now with silver, he said, I've chosen thee in the furnace of the affliction. God said, there's great things I got in store for you. Yes. I got great things in store for you. Because something we got to understand that God loves us so much. Yes. See, he was the redeemer. He was the holy one of Israel. That's the thing that, that we got to know. He was the redeemer. He was the holy one of Israel. Yes. And God wanted us to live like who he is. And God don't want us to get caught up. You know, and God is the one that teaches us how to profit. God is the one that teaches us how to live according to his will. Yes. And the Bible said that they that know that God would be strong and do his blood. And God wants us to do great and mighty works. He wants us to live an invisible life. Yes. But because Israel had turned away, because Israel had gotten comfortable and Israel wanted to do their own thing, God had to defer his anger. Because if God's anger would have got hold to the people that were disobedient, 
just like us. If God anger would have God hold to us when we were not doing what He had said in His Word, God would have destroyed us. But God loves us so much, and God said to His people, "I got to put you in a furnace." I, you know, even in affliction, I got to get you purified. I got to get you to where you love me, to where you trust me. Yes. And to where you, you soul out to serve me. To where you soul out to live a life yes. that pleases and sets blood to me. And I don't care who, who say it, who do. You're going to yet trust God and you're going to continue to go forward yes. and live this life according to every word that was seen out of my mouth of God. The Bible let us know here. God, has, he loves each and every one of us that, that, that keeps his word. Yes. You know, that he do according to what he's saying. Yes. But he's not told thee. For the love of verse said, for my own sake. Jesus. The Bible said, for my own sake. For even my sake. God let us know he has chosen us. And he loves us. And God wants us to be prepared. And God wants us to be able to do a work. God wants to be able to yes. do a greater work. And he will call on you to God to do a work, but to do a greater work. Jesus. And go forward. And, and that's what God requires us to do. So when God is going through, God don't want us to be using his identity. God don't want us to be just calling upon his name. And, and we have no relationship with him. Right. We have no fellowship with him. But God wants us to be with people to call his name yes. consistently yes. each and every day. My Lord. And the Bible goes on to let us know. In the Romans in 5 and 3 it said, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. I yes. also knowing that tribulations, Come on. tribulations, yes. work in patience. Right. Lord, give me the strength. strength. Give me the strength that I need, God, to know that this too shall pass, God. Yes. Give me the strength, God, to know, God. Lord, that this time, this moment, God, you told me I can yet praise you. I can yet glorify you, God, for it, God. Lord, I can yet have a mind to, to seek your face, God. Lord, I know you're coming back for people to seek your face, God, each and every day. God, help me to know, God. God, I was chosen to live this life. I was chosen to love you, God, with all my heart, soul, and strength. Right. I was chosen, God, no matter what the circumstances look like or whatever I'm facing, God. Lord, to know, the God, that you love me, God. And, Lord, if you gave me this opportunity to serve you, God, no matter what I am, God, Lord, I got to serve you, God. Yeah. Lord, I got to glorify you, God, because you are the Holy One. You're the Redeemer, God. Lord, you're the one that had called me out of darkness into the marvelous light. And Lord, you saw me, God. Lord, when I didn't even know myself, when I was confused, and when I was in the world, and I was being, I was getting ready to, to be taken out by the, the wicked one, God. Lord, but you saw me, Lord, in pollution of my blood, God. Lord, you saw me struggling, and, and God, you saw me where I needed a Savior, and you sent your Son, and your, your Son gave his life, God. And Lord, I thank you, he saw me, God. Lord, and I thank you, God, even as I go through those night times and I, I go through the horses and I, I go through the pain and I go through the suffering. And, and the Bible said that you let us know that if we don't suffer with him, we won't reign with him. Even as I go through things that I don't understand, God, but it's for your glory, God. Help me to go through for your glory. Help me to go through so I can tell the story of the God that pulled me out. Help me to go through that I can give you a, a witness for that one, God. You're the one that's locked up in the mind. The one that's locked up by the sin and, and trapped by the enemy, God. Lord, if I go through the affliction, God, Lord, I know, God, it's only for a moment, God. Lord, you said that my light affliction is only for a moment, God. Lord, when I know it's for your glory, God. Lord, because you're going to bring me out, God. Lord, you're going to bring me out, God. Lord, if I can just hold on, God. Lord, if I can just trust in you, God. Lord, you said you are deliver me, God. Lord, I know, God, without a shadow of a doubt, God. Lord, you said to me, God, I cannot do it, God. But, Lord, if I just trust you, God. Lord, if I just believe, God. Lord, you said in your word, God. Taste and see, God. Lord, in the furnace of my affliction, God. Lord, you told me to taste and see, God. Lord, that the Lord is good. God, you're good in this, God. God, you're faithful in this, God. And, God, I know, God. Lord, I know, God. Help me, Lord. Lord, that if I just obey you, God. Jesus. 
Lord, if I just obey you, God. Jesus. Lord, if I can just hold on, God. Help me, Lord. And see, that's the thing about it. Trials and tests come. Jesus. To what we take our mind off of God. Come on. They come because of the not the trust. It okay. calls us to come to what we don't want to obey, God. Jesus. Because the only thing we want to do is look at what's going on in the furnace. Yes. Look at what's going on in the affliction that we're dealing with. Jesus. But the Bible let us know it's for a greater work. Hey. The Bible let us know it's for great things to take place in our hey. lives. See, I don't know, and, and but yet still I know God knows, and yes. because He knows, I gotta trust Him for it. Because the Bible said, "How is it that you can get some glory in this? Jesus. How is it that you can you can see this thing is for my good Jesus. when it's so bad?" But I'm here to let you know, God said, "I was chosen this, Jesus. and because I chose you, I'm not like man. See, man gotta see it another way, but Jesus. God sees us as we are." And when he sees us as we are, he said, whosoever will, let him come. come on, and when you come to God, like you are, and when you come to God, you won't stay that way because change takes place in your life. Lord, and God now. said in the word, Jesus. God let him know. He said, I've chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Jesus. God let him know that don't let circumstances, situation, but get the best of us. But what we got to be found looking to God. What we got to be found trusting God. Yes. Continue to move forward. Yes. Look to the Savior. Look to the hill where your help is going to come from and your help only going to come from. Yes. Don't trust in everything else come on, come on. that you're hearing. Don't trust in the moment because this moment is only just a moment. Jesus. But so many times people let the moment get the best of them. That's why so many people are incarcerated. And that's why so many people get caught up in drugs and alcohol and, and all kind of things of the world because they get caught up in that moment. Mm. Right. But I'm here to let you know, God let them know that even in the moment that your affliction is or oh, feel like it's getting the best of you, in the furnace, hey. God let them know I chose indeed. He said, I chose you even now. And see, you got to look in the mirror and say, God, you said you chose me, God. Yes. God, I don't understand why I'm feeling the way. God, I don't understand why this is going on and that's going on. But God, you said in your word, God, that you chose me, God. And because you chose the people Jesus. That, that love you, God. Lord, I want you to refine. God, I want you to purify me, God. Yes. In this process, let this Babe, this come, let this get, don't get the best of me. But even just Jesus said, let this bitter cup, it got bad. Jesus. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, this bitter cup, let it pass. Jesus. But I'm going to let you know, we got to know that God has our best interest. And God loves us. And God cares for us. God loves us so much. That he will defer the anger. God loves us so much that he's not going to allow circumstances to get 